whether it's a bull market or a bear market, an economic boom or economic recession, I believe that everyone should take control of their own financial futures. And one of the main ways to do it is to keep track of your expenses and budgeting. But how does one get started on that journey? In this video, we're going to review the five best expense tracking and budgeting apps in 2022. Here we go. All right, the first app we have is Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Before they're actually known as Clarity Money. It's one of my favorite expense tracking applications out there. One of my favorite features is that it can connect to most major banks and medium-sized credit unions. At the same time, you can also connect to your brokerages if you want to. So it's actually very, very easy to make a connection like that. And to me, it has one of the best user interfaces in the market today. It gives clear, concise information really quickly at a quick glance. You can understand exactly what's going on with your finances. It shows you a great net worth chart, and then you can tap into and see the assets and the liabilities that you currently have. But one important thing is that you have to connect to all of your accounts in order to provide an accurate picture of your financial situation. What I like to do is to link all my checkings and my savings, but I try to elim eliminate my savings account from my tracking. I would rather to feel poor every single day than to feel like I have enough. Not sure if that makes sense. Other than a net worth chart, it also has a really good snapshot of your expenses. It shows you the latest transactions that you made. You can do a really quick, fast search, and then it shows you exactly how much you spent from this particular service or product. It provides a great snapshot for the month shows you how much of your incoming salary that you already spent. You can go back to, for example, a June month. You can see that of the money that I brought in, 5,000 of them is spent or went out of my account. I had $309 left over and I had a savings and investment contribution of $1,000. It also does a great job at categorizing most expenses. For example, in the month of August, I spent around $2,300 on my home already. Most of it went to the mortgage and $248 on my bills and utilities. And then here are the categorizations. It does a great job at categorizing, but it's not perfect. That's why you need to go in sometimes and mark as the proper category for what that expense is. So you will understand in the future, hey, this is considered a utility. I also spent about $114 already on grocery, $58 on entertainment and other expenses. Those are for things that you just don't know what the category you put it on. So I just put it under other. And then it shows that I still have about $3,470 incoming for the rest of the month. So I had to really plan it out on how I spend those money. And then at the end, it gives you a relatively simple financial article that you can read and learn about. I find it quite useless. It's not really relevant to my situation. It doesn't really give good proper financial education. And another great feature they have is it's actually linked to Marcus Banking. Marcus is a consumer facing high interest savings account from Goldman Sachs. Right now they're paying 1.5% APY. And if you use my link to join Marcus Savings, you actually get an extra 1% on your savings account. So you will get 2.5%, which is a relatively high interest savings account. So remember to use my link in the description to open your own Marcus Savings account. So I really love Marcus Banking. It offers really great UI UX for its users. It gives me a really quick summary of my expenses, how it went. But there are some flaws of using this application. Number one, it does not have a budgeting feature. This is a great expense tracking tool, but it does not give the user a benefit of having a budget and remind you of that budget as you go through the month. Like every other financial apps, it has some data sync issues. Sometimes the connection between Marcus and let's say my Chase Bank will get broken and I have to reconnect and that will cause some data issues. And lastly, this can be considered a flaw because when its original founder, Adam Dale created Clarity Money, he wanted to create an application that provides and help build proper financial habits for its end users. But after he sold the company Goldman Sachs, I think the product team at Goldman Sachs really, really just went away in terms of that decision making. It's no longer trying to help the end user to build good financial habits. For example, they used to have a feature that, that will help you cancel your recurring expenses. For example, if you had a subscription to let's say Hulu or Netflix, 
you can actually fill out a form here on the application and then they will reach out to Hulu or Netflix to cancel your subscriptions for you. That's no longer a feature of the application. So I think Marcus Banking is a great tool for people who already established their financial habits. They just want instead a place to aggregate all their financial information so they can keep track of everything. So I would say this application is great for intermediate users who loves a solid gray UI, gray UX application to, to track your expenses. The next application we have is Nerd Wallet. It's actually a great application designed by the platform Nerd Wallet. They do really, really good financial education content. So that's one of the biggest pros on the platform. It provides really great financial education content within the platform, within the app itself. With tools like mortgage rates comparison and lender approval and calculator for mortgage payments to build their financial planning skill sets. In terms of another features, it has a really great net worth over time chart. So you can see that on this platform, when I purchased the home, it actually shows my home value, how much it gone up since I joined the platform. But it doesn't have a good job in terms of gathering all the mortgage payment companies. As you can see right now, it only shows the value of the home and my other assets, but it does not allow me to add liabilities from my mortgage company. So it's not considered the debt on my property to be on the platform. And at the same time, it uses Redfin, which is notorious for their home valuation tool because they don't give anywhere close to an accurate estimate of what the value of the home should be. And similar to other expense tracking tools, it doesn't have a budgeting feature. So its purpose is for expense tracking and aggregation of all your financial accounts. So here are some of the cons of using NerdWallet. First of all, the application, personally, I feel is poorly designed. It looks like an app that's not native to iOS. It looks like it's an app built using one code base, two platforms. So it just doesn't feel as smooth as if you use Swift and build an iOS app by itself. Second, it has too much advertising. So the way NerdWallet makes money is by referral revenue. That means that they try to recommend you financial products. And when you do sign up, they make money from the referral. As you go through the app, you can see that they will recommend uh, what kind of credit card I should use, other personal loans or banking product or student loans, auto loans, online brokers, insurance. It just feels like oh, there are a lot of ads going on on this app. So who should use NerdWallet? I think if you were someone who's just starting out and try to build a good financial habit, at the same time, try to learn the fundamentals of financial education. NerdWallet is a great tool for that. It has awesome articles, financial content, and it's all the tools like a mortgage payment tool, how much house you can afford. All those are great for people who are just starting out on their financial journey and try to build healthy financial habits. The next app is what I consider the Swiss knife of financial budgeting app, Mint Mobile. It does everything that you expect that a budgeting and expense tracking app should do. It provides a net worth chart, a spending chart, cash flow, investments, how much credit card debt you have, and keep track of your loans. And they do a great job tracking it over time as well. You do have to sync those accounts together if you want to aggregate all those information, but they just do such a great job of keeping track of all the information so they can provide you a comprehensive picture over time. It shows your recent transactions, keeping track of all your expenses in and out. And more importantly, it actually have a budgeting tool. You can set a budget that you feel like is reasonable for your comfort zone, adjusting any amount that you deem fit for that particular category. For example, I don't want to use $300 as amusement. I'm assuming amusement is like amusement park. I barely go to amusement parks. So I'm just going to say let's maybe $5 a month. And since it's one of the best financial tools out there, it has a lot of other great features that's integrated within the platform. Things like financial education blocks, and it has an awesome new integration with Bill Shark, which negotiates your bill on behalf of you. For example, my internet service provider is Suddenlink, and I can tell Bill Shark my information, and they will call Suddenlink for me and try to negotiate down the bill. 
And they only get paid if the bill is lower and they get paid a percentage of the amount of bill that it was lower. So those are the pros of Mint Mobile, which is just all around a wonderful app. Similar to other financial budgeting apps, it has some data sync issues from time to time. So we have to reconnect the integrations. You also have to categorize the transaction so you can recognize what type of expense this is. And you have to do that over time. I think this tool is great for everyday user, intermediate user, advanced users. It educates the people who are new to the personal finance space. It provides awesome gadgets, tools, and calculators for people who are intermediate level in the personal finance space all around, just a great application. The next app is called YNAB, you need a budget. I heard great thing about the application, so I'm downloading it for the first time. Okay, so YNAB actually looks like it charges money. So unfortunately, I won't be doing a review on it. I guess this app is really great for people who want to pay $98 per year to stay on top of their finances. So I can imagine some of the pros it has is that it doesn't keep track of your financial data. So you won't really see advertisement on the platform. And one con is that you actually have to pay money in order to use the service, which I personally do not like. So unfortunately, this is going to be the review I have for YNAB. So I guess if you like to pay money for a financial app, this is the app for you. So the next application is called Spending Tracker. It's a great budgeting focused tool that allows you to set a proper budget for yourself. It's really simple user interface, how to add expense, category, entertainment. I just want to spend $150 per month on entertainment purposes. And it shows you how much money you have left and you can do another expense, how much you wanna spend on eating out. If you wanna make it repeating, you can, but you do have to upgrade to the pro version, which only costs $2.99 one time forever. Sounds like a great deal. And if you don't wanna pay, you can watch a video and earn some money along the way. So eventually you can get this app for free. So I earn myself a credit to use the repeat feature. Let's do another expense, let's just do shopping i like to shop for my pets and i like to spend maybe a hundred dollar 150 dollars a month for my pets and let's make that repeating done so now you can see it's a very simple straightforward budgeting tool that doesn't connect to your bank but it allows you to set a proper budget so you can keep track of everything this is a great app for people who just want to use a traditional budgeting app that you personally don't have to connect to any of your banks. So if you don't trust third party with your financial data, this is a great application for you. And if you just want the budgeting feature, this is a perfect app for you. You can also export your data in like PDF or CSV. So you can use that data and plot it onto an Excel sheet and keep track of everything on your computer. Well, that's it. That's the five best expense and budgeting apps on the market in 2022. Well, four of them plus why in AB you need a budget, which I didn't get an opportunity to really try out. Personally, I give Mint the best score, the highest score, because I think it's one of the best platforms out there. It caters to beginners, intermediate and advanced users, has a lot of useful financial information and keep track of your expenses and net worth over time as a wonderful UI. And I really think that it will fit a lot of people's use cases. The runner up, I give it to Marcus by Goldman Sachs. I really think that it has one of the best UIs out there for budgeting and expense tracking apps. Personally, it's my favorite app. It caters to intermediate users who establish their financial habits. It gives you really concise, useful information, and it's just a wonderful user experience overall. Remember, the next step of your financial journey after you learn to budget and save is to know how to invest. If you're interested in learning alternative investments other than stocks, you should check out how to invest in startups and cryptos using a tax-free strategy in this video.